What's up everyone, Beast Mode back here with another video. So today I just wanted to quickly cover the second place Diva Hero Zombie deck at YCS Sacramento. You can see the in-person deck profile on uh, Playtest IRL's YouTube channel. Um, also, I, before we get into the video, I want to thank everyone for your support. I am just under 2K subs. When this video goes live, I may even have 2K subs. And I said when I hit 2K subs, I would have a face cam just to add a little bit more to the video. I feel like that um, makes the videos a little bit better. And again, I never thought I'd be anywhere close to where I am today. I know I haven't really been posting. I have taken a leave from Yu-Gi-Oh! for the last month since Nationals. It was just such a grind to get the deck ready, um, playtesting with my buddy JG and, and cousins and brother, and really getting ready. And, you know, we had a good performance at 7-2, and two, but we didn't get the top that we wanted. So I will be grinding again for RBT New York, which is next month. So I'll probably be starting up soon maybe this week um so the content should be coming back again but anyway onto the deck profile which again was covered on uh playtest irl's channel this was created by the player named Zab uh, zabo 91 on line most people would say that this is very similar to the current hero diva zombie build I would say, sure, I think that 90% of them running around are all going to be sharing the same cards. Like, that's just what the deck plays. They play zombies, they play heroes, and they play some number of these spells and traps, typically bottomless return. You know, the, the deck is what the deck is. You know, it's like playing Blackwing. They all look about the same. Um, but this deck is about four cards different, which doesn't sound like a lot. That's, what, 10% of the deck. Um, but the four cards that are taken out, Two of them is a big deal, and this deck com functions completely different than the other build. Um, and I will say, and I will at least talk about the reasons why I think that's the case. So there's no Gold Sark here, okay? Um, which is the big removal of uh, in the deck here, because Gold Sark is was often believed to be the glue to hold this deck in, you know, together. I know that's how the the case with Diva Hero. Um, and that does make sense, and that's what I believe. The problem is when you look at Gold Sark and what it does, it gets you the piece that you need to to combo off. Um, usually, you know, you're always looking for either the water or the miracle fusion. Sometimes you need the heavy or dark arm. So you always need that one piece, and that card gets you there. And that's the plus. The downsides are, A, if you draw it past turn one or later in the game, it's not as strong, obviously. You know, if you're going second, it's already not that strong. So um, so that's one negative. Number two, and probably the biggest, is the fact that your opponent gets to see what you're searching. So, and not only do they get to see what you're searching, which is one problem, the, the bigger problem is the fact that what you're searching is giving information to your opponent. And people don't really see it that way, but it is. Because if you're searching heavy your hand is probably locked and loaded, right? So if I see that you search heavy, now I'm thinking, okay, he's he or she's got OTK. So I need to play in a certain way to, to you know, play around that, essentially. If you search dark arm, then there could be some number of darks, obviously, in your hand. And, and I'm, it may not be that simple, but good players are going to be able to pick up on some of the cards in your hand when you gold sark. So it's almost as if you're trap dust shooting yourself. Now, not to that extent, of course. It's a minor little baby trap dust shoot, but it is giving information to your opponent. And another thing that people don't realize, too, is that if you open Gold Sock turn one, you are playing with five cards, or you're playing minus one for two turns. And that's a big deal because trying to when when good players are making reads when you only have to read make a read out of five cards it really simplifies the the game for you so um now if you can get to that to that second turn obviously you draw for your turn you go back you know go, let's say you go up to six and then you get the second standby phase boom you go up to seven so you know it, it could be a big uh, momentum swing when that happens but you have to get there number one and number two i, I can tell you how many times that my opponent has gold sock for future fusion i have a dust turn on my hand Typically, I'd set it and wait for an end phase dust to hit something that they can't chain. But at this case, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to hold it for a turn. And that's one turn down. I'll set it on my next turn. They play Future Fusion. I chain dust. Like, it, it happens all the time. So my point is that the card has a lot of negatives as well. And I would say the big positive being able to be kind of the glue to the deck. Also, the reason why Gold Sark signed on this deck is to enable and help the explosiveness. But I feel like if you want to play an explosive deck, 
just play DB Hero because it's far more explosive than this deck. It, the whole deck revolves around literally winning in one turn, OTKing in one turn. This deck can do it as well. But the argument for this deck was, we'll play this one. We'll play Diva Zombie Hero because it has a better mid game. So, so you want to play an explosive deck, but you also want to have a mid game. And I feel like this deck just does mid game, grind game. Um, it, it just does that better than most decks because of the recruiters, because of the Goblin Zombies, because of the Kaias. All this stuff can generate advantage. Like you have access to all these tools to really play a slow grind game, but yet you're playing cards to try to OTK. And I just feel like this deck is is still just a notch behind Diva Hero with the OTK potential. So, but it's not also playing to the mid game. This version is. So if you watch the replay on, on um, Playtest IRL's channel, the player will definitely talk about how he's playing, but he pretty much said that he was playing a slow, a, grind, a more grindy game, trying to get a little bit of advantage and then would push. So kind of like the old school zombie builds. Um, but this this deck just plays way better one ofs, right? It plays Stratos, which is a great card. Normal Summon plays Future Fusion, one of the best cards in the game. Miracle Fusion, best top deck in the game. So this deck is playing like Diva Zombie, essentially, but with better cards. So I just feel like, A, if you want to play an explosive version of the deck, just play Diva Hero. And I've said that before. Um, I feel like Diva Hero just does what this deck's trying to do. And I feel like this version here is better for what this deck's trying to do play a little bit have a little bit of a mid game but still have that explosiveness so anyway back onto the changes here there was two dust tornadoes added to the deck they cut solemn which is can be slow opening early you know what i mean it's solemn's great when you make a push and you have the solemn backup um but dust also facilitates you being able to clear back row and make a push and then you could also dust and set return off of that which is also a big win condition in this deck um, it, he chose to play foolish over one of the gold socks, which kind of acts like a gold sock in some sense, because you can, a lot of the time you you're looking with gold sock to get that piece. And sometimes you can just foolish the piece of the graveyard. And maybe you need plague. Maybe you need a Mally. Um, worst comes to worst. You can put the hero in the grave that you might need. You can send necro gardener, which is also another addition. This card here is really, really strong. Uh, Bayou turbo loves this, uh, this card. Now, uh, I see how strong it is. I, pl I've played old school diva builds with it. I've topped with old school diva builds with this card in the deck. And it was like not even used to its full potential at that time. I'm still trying to find ways to put it back in the deck. There's a reason it, there, <laughs> there are many reasons why this card is at one. Um, so I can understand why he wanted to play it. Um, so enough of the main deck. There are four cards different at double dust, um, foolish necro, but again, I feel that the way that this deck plays is completely different because of Gold Sark not being in the deck. Um, sideboard is also completely different aside from a few staples. Um, DD Assailant is one of my favorite cards right now. I've said it in a few videos. I've been playing it in sideboards. I even main decked one for a period of time. Um, D Dodges deck Devi outs every black wing monster in the game. Gladiator Beast, they can't even deal with this. If you just summon an attack position, like what do they do unless they have Test Tiger? um you don't really want to set it because they can attack into it and then like tag out and kill it with marmillo but summoning it nothing gets over it um dd crow at one is probably not the right call so this deck lost in the finals to the fishborg um frog deck which is like gaining popularity um dd crow is really good against that deck because it plays triple pot of avarice you can hit the the fishborg too but they don't really care about that um so i feel like maybe the call is probably dd crow over soul release i could be wrong but um soul release is good if it's like if they have only five frogs in the graveyard but the problem is that deck will literally thin out all of the frogs and i'm not sure how many they play i know it's more than five um and like soul release essentially like if they have 10 cards in the graveyard or 11 monsters or whatever the case is like this card is just useless against that deck um you could hit the treeborn sure but the 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 power of that deck is just gaining so much advantage and then a pot of avarice and just keeps doing it so i think maybe another crow is probably needed but again i'm not saying that they would have won the finals and i have no idea i wasn't there but that would be me playing probably more than one crow dina is obviously needed vortex is great everyone's worried about the titanium deck um and this is good against a frog deck as well um i love smashing ground one of my favorite side deck cards just a generic one for one out titanial can out dupe um so release again i i just i'm never a huge fan of this card because i'm always holding it waiting for like maximum value and it's probably not the thing you want to do but um maybe one's probably fine but who knows mind crush i feel like this card is better than on paper than what it really is i think we were really side decking this card because of dragon turbo which is not as popular anymore um it doesn't even work that great against dragon turbo like they have to have that hand all set up and like you have the mind crush then 
this card probably could be cut, but who am I? Um, Needle Ceiling, I like this card. I've been testing it a bit. I think, again, it's one of those cards that when it works, you probably win the game, but if they ever see it, they're never going to play into it again. And um, I think the card works far less than you want it to, but it's still a pretty good answer to some of the decks that are running around. This card is just busted right now. This is the answer to Blackwing because this deck has a tough matchup against Blackwing. Um, anything with Royal Oppression, really, but Blackwing's tough. Skill Drain, I'm a strong uh, I'm a believer of Skill Drain in the side deck. I go... It depends on the event. I go back and forth with it, but I do like this card. It stops a lot of decks, especially frogs. Gladiator Beasts, you know, they have to have the Book of Moon to be able to tag out or to pop it. Um, you know, it's Skill Drain. stops everything. This card here, I think, is better than... Uh, I, I don't think it's as good as people think it is. Uh, I just think that this should just be DD Crow, and it's better because, A, you can't see a DD Crow coming, and, B, um, this card can be kind of slow sometimes. Like, it's good against the Pot of Avarice deck, sure, uh, the Frog deck, so maybe it stays, but um, I just feel like this card's... I don't know. I've never had that much luck with it. But, anyway, this here actually should be a Flameville. That's what he played, the Euroquesis, I think it's the name, which makes sense because anything that's playing with time, of, like, time um end of phase like you have to have something that could potentially steal a win which is kind of you know it is what it is but that's how you have to play um so you need like android sometimes which i don't think he played um i do play android in in person events just because of the fact that you could drop an android and like win because you gain 600 light points it's what it is the the rules are the rules so it's kind of you know i wish it was end of turn or whatever it is three phases you know how it used to be zero one two three um but they just go end of phase and that's it so um this extra deck is pretty much what it is so i just wanted to quickly cover the deck here and my thoughts i do think that this deck plays completely different although i haven't played it yet but just by looking at it and what the person was saying about the deck it makes sense to me um this is probably one build that i would consider playing i'm not a huge like zombie hero player just because of how it plays i just don't like the whole explosiveness and then like hoping that they don't have gores because they always have gores or hoping they don't have a clap back um i just don't like that kind of style of play and honestly i'm really not that great at like seeing all the otk lines i miss a lot of stuff like that i'm far better at playing the the grind game that's just how i prefer to play um and this deck does it a bit better but uh, that's pretty much all I have to say here. Hopefully next video I have the webcam or face cam up, whatever it's called. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next one.